Okay, my friends, welcome back to the church. It's a good place to teach and uh, yeah, talk about this wonderful new medicine. In fact, the Spanish call Dr. Hammer's new medicine La Medicina Sagrada, the sacred medicine. So we are in the right place for that. Before we start, I please ask you to read the disclaimer. While medicine as we know it is based on the concept that diseases are malfunctions or failure of the organism, that diseases are caused by pathogenic microbes, by malignant cancer cells, defective genes, or a weak immune system. And these are just the most prevalent theories. Then there are also the so-called risk factors believed to increase the chance of developing a disease. Risk factors such as a family history of the disease, toxins in our food, in our environment, smoking, electromagnetic pollutants, geopathic radiation, diet, nutritional deficiency, hormones or stress, and the list goes on. Well, for the most part of my life, I believed all that. And I was also scared. I was scared of getting cancer and that I would have to go through this. Mastectomy, radiation, chemo. But one day, all of this completely changed. In 1999, I was in Austria at the time, I was invited to a lecture about German new medicine. First, I was hesitant because the media kept reporting that this Dr. Hammer was a charlatan, a quack, a psychopath who denied his patients the standard treatment, particularly chemo. And this was also the reason why they had stripped him of his medical license. Yet, he continued to see patients. Eventually, I decided to go and form my own opinion. And there I sat, listening to the speaker. And I was in awe, to say the least. This was science at its best. Firmly anchored in the science of embryology, Dr. Hammer was able to explain the nature of diseases based on biological principles that apply to every human being and therefore to each patient's case. <coughs> Founded on five biological laws, Dr. Hammer provided the scientific evidence that diseases are not, as assumed, errors of nature but instead significant biological special programs of nature created to support an organism, humans, animals, plants, during unexpected distress, bringing to light that nature is not antagonistic and hostile, but that nature is caring, that nature is creative, and that the inherent force of nature is to protect, protect its creation and to secure its survival. That is our survival, because we are part of nature. And this is it's one of my favorite quotes. This is how Dr. Hammer himself experienced his discovery. Finding the biological special programs of nature was indeed a revelation. Only life itself can write such a drama. Without the death of my son and my own subsequent cancer, the true nature of diseases would probably not have been discovered for many decades to come because conventional medicine is moving away from the secret. 
So let's delve into the secret of the new medicine. And I will first summarize the five biological laws so we have the basics for our special topic tonight. While the first biological law states that every disease originates from a biological conflict, a biological conflict differs from general stress, even from extreme stress, insofar as the distress for example, the loss of a workplace, a separation from a loved one, a cancer diagnosis occurs entirely unexpected. From a biological point of view, unexpected implies that the situation could be detrimental for the one who was caught off guard. So in order to support the individual during such an unexpected and unforeseen crisis and in order to facilitate a conflict resolution, a meaningful special biological program created exactly for that situation is instantly activated. And this biological program involves the psyche, the brain and the organ. Based on the studies of tens of thousands of brain scans, uh, Dr. Hammer discovered that a very specific type of conflict always impacts in the same area of the brain. On a brain scan, we see this impact as a sharp target ring configuration. Here we have an example. Dr. Hammer further found that it is exactly this brain relay from where the disease and also the uh, disease symptoms are controlled. So let's look at the example we have here. In this, uh, on this uh, CT scan, we see the impact of a conflict in the area of the brain that is called the motor cortex. The motor cortex uh, controls the, uh, our muscle movements. The biological, biological conflict linked to the muscle is not being able to escape, not being able to run away, feeling tied down, feeling stuck, causing muscle paralysis. As we see, for example, in MS, in ALS, or the so-called Guillain-Barré syndrome. So what is the biological purpose of the paralysis? What is the significance of it? Well, in biological terms, the paralysis, the inability to move, is related or is equivalent to a fake dead reflex. Because in nature, a predator usually only attacks a prey when it tries to escape. So the response is, since I can't escape, I play dead. The human brain is encoded with the same survival program. So let's look a little bit closer with this example. On this brain scan, we see the impact on the left, on the right side of the motor cortex, precisely in the area that controls the left arm because there is a crossover correlation from the brain to the organ, in this case from the brain to the muscles. This indicates that the person had suffered or experienced a motor conflict that involves the left arm. For example, not being able to push somebody away, not being able to defend oneself, feeling stuck with the left arm. Well, in this example here on this picture, we see how a distressing vaccination experience can trigger such a conflict. Okay, we see how distressed this girl is, I mean, and how she's held very tightly, so the picture really speaks for itself. Depending now on the intensity of the conflict, the symptoms can range from weakness of the left arm to a complete paralysis. 
and the symptoms will last until the mind has received the all clear signal, so to speak. And this is the starting point of German new medicine. While the view that diseases are caused by negative beliefs is in our days, or nowadays, very popular. Beliefs can make you sick. Negative thoughts create diseases. Diseases are diseases of the mind are the standard phrases. But the work of researchers like Bruce Lipton or Dr. Joe Dispenza um, in the field of biology or neuroscience are of great value in many respects. However, concerning diseases, their explanations are still locked in the old medical paradigm and in the concept that diseases are failures or dysfunctions. Dysfunctions on, a mole on the molecular level, as uh, Bruce Lipton says. But Dr. Hammer's research over the last 30 years clearly shows and demonstrates that the beliefs cause disease theory is invalid. And here is why. We humans share this biological conflict with all species. Like all living beings, we also suffer loss conflicts, separation conflicts, abandonment conflicts, death fright conflicts, existence conflicts, starvation conflicts, nest worry conflicts, territorial conflicts, sexual conflicts, attack conflicts, feeding stuck conflicts. Conflicts that threaten our survival, the safety of our domain, the bond with members of our group, or the group itself. While it is the psyche that registered, registers instantly or instinctively the, uh, such dangers. Of course, uh, such a conflict is a highly, or how we individually perceive such a conflict, is highly subjective. It is determined by our social and cultural conditioning, by our knowledge, by our expectations, by our vulnerabilities, by our values and our beliefs. However, and this is the point, it is our biological assessment of the situation. It is our biological reading of the conflict that determines which biological program will be switched on. This association with a very specific biological conflict theme uh, takes place in a split of a second, occurs entirely on a subconscious level and involves the whole organism. So the psyche, the brain and the correlating organ. So let's go through this with an example. Let's say a woman receives the shocking news that her husband uh, was involved or uh, had a car accident and had, that he did not survive. At this moment, she can suffer a loss conflict which involves her ovaries. She can suffer a separation conflict which involves the lining of her milk ducts in her right breast if she is right-handed. You see the details we have based on Dr. Hammer's work. Beliefs cannot explain that. A belief that I think I might get cancer cannot determine if my breast cancer develops on the right or left breast. This woman can also suffer, based on her shock, an existence conflict which involves her kidneys, an existence conflict of uh, how can I get by if he leaves, how am I going to continue. He, she can also have a starvation conflict in a sense of not knowing how to provide for herself, how to put food on the table, which will involve her liver. 
She can also worry, uh, uh, suffer a nest worry conflict, being concerned about her children if there is no dad around. In this case, it would involve the breast glands of her left breast which is for a right-handed woman, the mother-child breast, because it is on the left side where a right-handed woman holds her baby, so her psyche associates with the left side her child. Or she can suffer also a feeling stuck conflict. What am I going to do now? She can also suffer the feeling stuck conflict when she receives the shock of feeling like rooted in the ground. So it will involve the muscles of her legs. She might then experience weakness in her legs or even more than that. So we see how important it is to know Dr. Hammer's work so when we have such a shock and we have consequently uh, uh, symptoms that we know exactly why these symptoms symptoms occur at this moment. So now, uh, as soon as the, as the biological association is established, the conflict-related biological program will be set into motion. And this takes us, sorry, this takes us to the second biological law, which says every biological special program has two phases provided there is a resolution to the conflict. So for those of you who are new here today, let's just review a few terms. Normotonia, sympathicotonia, vagotonia, these are terms that relate to our autonomic nervous system. All it really says is that during the day we are in a natural state of stress or, or in sympathicotonia. During the night we are in a natural state of rest or in vagotonia. DHS stands for Dirk Hammer syndrome. Dr. Hammer termed a biological conflict a Dirk Hammer syndrome in honor of his son Dirk, whose unexpected tragic death was the reason why Dr. Hammer himself developed cancer and, which we know, initiated his research. And the moment we have such a DHS, the moment we have such an unexpected conflict shock, the do normal day and night rhythm is instantly interrupted and we enter the conflict-related biological program. So let's look what happens. The moment we have this DHS, the moment the program starts, so during the conflict active phase, the entire organism is now engaged in facilitating a conflict resolution. So beginning with the DHS, the autonomic nervous system switches instantly into a prolonged state of sympathicotonia, causing sleeping difficulties. So typically, we wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and start thinking about the conflict. But there is a good reason for that, because the extra waking hours and the total focus on the conflict allow us to find a resolution to the conflict as quickly as possible. And this is highly important, because the shorter the conflict active phase, the shorter will be the healing phase. We also call the conflict active phase the cold phase because when we are stressed, our blood vessels are constricted and as a result we have cold hands. So we have cold hands during the entire conflict active phase. So from now on you can start observing that. In other words, if you have cold hands for a longer period of time or when you have such a conflict shock, your hands will immediately turn cold or become cold, which indicates now for you, I am in a biological program, which also means I should try to resolve this conflict as soon as possible in order to um, uh, you know, resolve it so the healing phase will be shorter. 
If we are not able to resolve a conflict right away because we are constrained, we want to try to downgrade the conflict, to minimize the conflict mass, which will also minimize the symptom that also occurred during the active phase. So let's look at the organ level. And I will explain this to you with the biological compass of German new medicine. Here we see again on this diagram the conflict active phase and the healing phase. And we continue first with the conflict active phase. If more tissue is required, remember what I said, uh, during the conflict active phase, the entire organism is mobilized in order to facilitate a conflict resolution. Okay? So if more tissue is required to facilitate a conflict resolu resolution, the conflict-related conflict organ responds to the conflict with cell augmentation or cell proliferation. So here we find during the conflict active phase tumors, for example, in the colon, in the lungs, in the liver, in the pancreas, in the breast glands, in the prostate, in the uterus, but also an overactive thyroid or enlarged tonsils. And all these conditions are linked to very specific biological conflicts that Dr. Hammer has identified. While the reverse principle is, uh, applies to all organs and tissues that are controlled from the cerebrum. Okay? So I've reviewed this, all old brain controlled tissue generate during the conflict active phase cell augmentation. Old brain is the brain stem and the cerebellum, so the oldest part of the brain. The opposite principle applies to all organs and tissues that are controlled from the new brain or the so-called cerebrum. So if less tissue is required in order to facilitate a conflict resolution, the conflict-related organ responds with tissue loss as we see, for example, in osteoporosis, in uh, necrosis of the ovaries or the testicles. Okay. And again, all these conditions are linked to very specific conflict Dr. Hammer has identified. But we also have a third category because certain cerebrum controlled tissues, for example the muscles as already mentioned, but also the tissue of the inner ear, but also the so-called islet cells of the pancreas, they respond to the related conflict not with cell augmentation, so with tissue uh, proliferation, cell proliferation or tissue loss, but with functional loss or functional impairment, as we have already seen with the example of muscle paralysis, here we also find hearing loss, here we find also diabetes. Dr. Hammer's research is closely tied into the science of embryology taking into account the development of the human organism, Dr. Hammer discovered that the correlation between the psyche, the brain and the organ is also closely connected to the three embryonic germ layers, to the endoderm, the mesoderm and the ectoderm. And it is the brain CT studies that tied everything together. By comparing the location of the brain relays from where the biological programs are coordinated, Dr. Hammer discovered that uh, co comparing that location with the de development of the, of the fetus, Dr. Hammer discovered that all organs that derive or develop from the same germ layer are also co controlled from the same area of the brain. So, for example, all organs that develop from the endoderm are controlled from the brainstem. All organs that develop from the ectoderm are controlled from the cortex. 
And because of the innate connection with the psyche, every organ cell practically knows how to uh, 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 f respond in order to facilitate a conflict resolution. For example, if a female suffers a nest worry conflict over the well-being of her child, the mesodermal breast gland cells controlled from the cerebellum instantly start to proliferate. The biological purpose of the cell proliferation is to provide more milk to the child in order to increase its chance of survival. And it is these additional breast gland cells that form a breast gland tumor. And even if a woman is not breastfeeding, this biological program is still activated because in biological terms, the female breast is synonymous for caring and for nurturing. So every female, whether mammal or human, is born with this biological response. It is a biological response that is encoded in the cells of her breast glands, in the brain cells that control the breast, breast gland, and in the female psyche. And this is why breast cancer and all other cancers have existed since the beginning of life. And this, my friends, is why we don't have to be afraid of cancer, of any type of disease, especially when we see what happens during the healing phase. As soon as the conflict is resolved, the whole organism is now mobilized to restore the organ to its original function. First, the autonomic system instantly switches into a state of lasting vagotonia, uh, forcing the organism to rest while healing runs its course. And now, we are seeing action. All additional cells that were generated during the conflict active phase are now broken down and removed. A cell loss that, was, that occurred during the conflict active phase is now restored, refilled and replenished with new cells. And now we are seeing symptoms we are all familiar with. For example, fatigue, because the whole organism is now in a state of lasting vagotonia, so we are very tired. Fever and inflammation because of the increase, increased blood flow to the healing tissue. Uh, swelling, healing always occurs in a fluid environment, so where there will be swelling, swelling causes pain. Then there is discharge, because the remnants of this decomposing and reconstructing process are now going to be eliminated. They're going to be eliminated through the urine, through the stool, uh, through the skin, through the sputum in the case of lung cancer, through the vagina in the case of uterus cancer. Okay? There will also be night sweats, but night sweats only occur when tubercular bacteria are involved because healing also involves the participation of bacteria and of fungi, which takes us to the fourth biological law and the beneficial role of microbes. So Dr. Hammer found and uh, confirms that fungi and mycobacteria, which are the oldest microbes that populated the oldest tissue that is controlled from the oldest part of the brain, that this fungi and mycobacteria now remove and decompose the cells that are no longer required. So infections like candida infection or any bacterial infection only occurs during the healing phase. Tubercular bacteria and fungi also remove cancers. They remove lung tumors, liver tumors, breast gland tumors, pancreas tumors, liver tumors, prostate tumors, and so forth. All tumors that are controlled from the old brain. 
If a person doesn't carry the necessary microbes, let's say because of an overuse of antibiotics, the tumor stays in place and encapsulates. Healing also includes or involves the white blood cells and the so-called antibodies. It is one of the most intriguing insights we get from Dr. Hammer's work that the immune system envisioned as a defense system against microbes, cancer cells and toxins is in reality a support system to aid a fast recovery. So if we, ha we only have to replace the word immune system with the term support system and we are right in the heart of the new medical paradigm, we are right in the heart of the new medical paradigm and um, uh, the belief or the thought that uh, um, um, there is a war in our body or that there is a self-attack as proposed in the autoimmune system theory that such a belief is outdated and that the idea of, uh, of fighting diseases and of beating a cancer is no longer necessary. It is meaningless, particularly when we understand that most healing symptoms, including cancers, many cancers in fact, are already healing symptoms. So if we take a look at these symptoms, we also recognize that many of them also occur when any wound is in healing. Okay, look at that. Here's a wound on a knee. What do we see? We see inflammation. We see swelling. We see definitely the man in pain. We see discharge, oozing, pus. Right? Well, my friends, the healing of cancer is exactly the same. There is no difference. So we might want to ask, why does healing, if these are all healing symptoms of so-called diseases, why does healing often take so long? Why do diseases become chronic? Well, the answer is because we keep scratching that wound in our psyche or we allow others to reopen a wound that is trying to heal. And we also have to be aware that most pharmaceutical drugs interrupt the healing phase. And the most brutal kind of interruption is chemo treatment. So this takes us back to the beginning and we can close the circle and can compare the old medicine with the new medicine. So the old medicine claims that diseases are caused by pathogenic microbes. Based on the fourth biological law, microbes are not pathogenic. They are not disease causing. On the contrary, microbes like bacteria or fungi participate in the healing process. Malignant cancer cells. Based on the third biological law, cancer cells are never malignant. Either they serve a biological purpose, which is during the conflict active phase, or they participate or are part of a refilling and replenishing process. Defective genes. Well, I take the liberty to refer to an article that I posted a few weeks ago on our website entitled Understanding Genetic Diseases in the Context of German New Medicine, where I go into that theory uh, uh, in great details. Weak immune system, while well, we know there is no such a thing as an immune system, there's only a support system that assists the healing process. Well, in light of the new understanding of diseases, risk factors or the risk factor theory also has to be re-evaluated. A poor diet, 
toxins in our food, in our environment, smoking, geopathic radiation, electromagnetic pollutants do not cause diseases. However, these factors deplete our body of energy, energy needed particularly when we are in healing. Anything that drains the body's vitality uh, makes the recovery phase much more difficult. A healthy diet, on the other hand, staying away from smoking, clearing the geopathic stress zones, and preventing the exposure to uh, pollutants, toxins, and so forth, definitely accelerates the healing process. It can accelerate the recovery process immensely. And also, if we are in good shape, so to speak, we are less susceptible to have a conflict shock. This is prevention, one of many aspects. And this is also why we have to take care of ourselves. Feeling abandoned, isolated, left out or left behind, it's one of the most difficult emotional experiences. We are by nature social beings, so we are all born with the desire to bond and to be with others. To be with our mother, our parents, our friends, our mate. And Dr. Hammer found that an abandonment is linked to our kidneys, to be more precise, to the kidney collecting tubules. In order to understand this better, we're going to look at the different tissues of the kidney and also the function of the kidney. The kidney collecting tubules are the oldest tissue. You see in German New medicine, we work with color, so it's yellow, it's the oldest tissue. So the kidney collecting tubules are the oldest tissue of the kidney. They therefore develop first during the embryonic stage and derive from the endoderm, which is the oldest germ layer. And like all endodermal tissue, the uh, kidney collecting tubules are controlled from the brain stem. The kidney parenchyma, here in orange, right? So the kidney parenchyma is basically the bulk of the kidney, and the kidney parenchyma is controlled from the midbrain, which is located between the old brain and the cerebrum, and the tissue derives from the mesoderm. The kidney parenchyma consists of millions and millions of nephrons that filter blood and produce urine. And the kidney collecting tools, that's why they have the name, they collect the urine and the, the urine flows through the renal pelvis to the ureter, the bladder, the urethra and out it goes. And we want to keep in mind that urine consists of approximately 95% of water and 5% of urine substances, for example, or including creatinine. It is also worth mentioning that the salt content of our bodily fluids, notably of our blood and of the amniotic fluid, is the same as the isotonic salt concentration in seawater, namely 9 per mil. This is an indication that the human organism, and I emphasize organism, also originates in the ocean. The renal pelvis, or better, the, renal, the lining of the renal pelvis, is the youngest tissue of the kidney. It therefore derives from the youngest germ layer, which is the ectoderm, and is therefore controlled from the youngest part of the brain, which is the cerebral cortex. But today, we are going to concentrate on the kidney collecting tubules.
The kidney collecting tubules provide us with the, one of the most significant survival programs that relate back to the time when our evolutionary ancestors were still living in the water and being thrust on shore would be a life-threatening situation. If this is the case, the kidney collecting tubule would instantly start to proliferate. The biological purpose of the cell proliferation is to close the excretion filter in order to withhold water to prevent the organism from drying out. This water retention program is vital because without a water, all metabolic processes of the body stop functioning. And Dr. Hammer discovered that our kidney collecting tubules respond the same way when we feel like a fish out of water. When we feel ousted, excluded, left behind, isolated and alone. We therefore call the conflict linked to the kidney collecting tubules an abandonment conflict. We also call it an existence conflict. An existence conflict is experienced as a fear for one's life. A cancer diagnosis, for example, can trigger such an existence conflict. An existence conflict can also be experienced when our livelihood is at stake. The feeling behind the conflict is, I have lost everything. This could be the loss of a home, it could be the loss of a loved one, of a parent, of a child, of a partner who provided safety and a home, physically and emotionally. And this, my friend, is, friends, is what happens. The moment the abandonment or existence conflict occurs, the conflict impacts in the area of the brain that controls the kidney tubules and the program is switched on. Starting with the conflict, there will be cell proliferation in the kidney collecting tubules and the cell proliferation uh, closes the excretion filter causing water retention. But the body not only retains water, but also creatinine. Clinically, this creatinine retention is called uremia. Creatinine is a waste product of the uh, protein metabolism and is usually excreted with the urine. But the, in the critical event of an existence conflict, the kidney recycles creatinine into protein in order to provide the body with nutrition. Why? Because for our evolutionary ancestors, the biological conflict of being swept out of the water environment meant in addition to the danger of drying out also a threat of starvation particularly of dying from protein deficiency. And for this emergency situation, Mother Nature has created yet another biological program which is to convert a toxin like creatinine into food in order to give the organism a chance to survive. Isn't that beautiful? The degree of the water retention, hey, just think logically, the degree of the water retention is determined by the intensity of the conflict. So for somebody who knows German New Medicine, so if we know German New Medicine, even a small abandonment conflict will now be noticed. We have a hard time fitting into our shoes, our pants are tight, the fingers are swollen, the rings are tight, the, uh, the socks show mark on the, marks on the legs, and we urinate less. Because of the decreased urine output, the urine is concentrated and deep yellow. 
So this is a good way to observe a kidney collecting tubal activity or the activity of such a, a program firsthand. Water retention also causes weight gain. One liter of water um, is a, a weighs approximately two and a half pounds. So if we start gaining weight, or uh, although we exercise regularly and haven't changed our diet, so if we start gaining weight and have a hard, or have a hard time losing weight, then an uh, abandonment conflict is most likely in the picture. If with an ongoing intense abandonment conflict, a person can gain a considerable amount of weight, the water is basically stored in the fat cells. So independent of the calorie intake and even without overeating, a person can gain a lot of weight. The reabsorbed water basically inflats the fat cells. This has nothing to do with a wrong diet. Somebody who is born with less fat cells than uh, average, this person will retain less water and as a result will uh, uh, gain less weight. But this is really the only difference. Dr. Hammer's work and research also explains the increasing number of overweight children. Children are very vulnerable, vulnerable, especially when they are little. Children suffer uh, abandonment conflicts uh, when they're put into daycare, when the parents don't have a lot of time for them, when a new sibling is born that gets more attention, when they feel unwanted, when they don't feel part of the pack, of the pack at home, of the pack in kindergarten, of the pack in school. Abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse by a family member can cause severe abandonment conflicts. Children also suffer abandonment conflicts when a family member leaves. For example, if a grandparent dies or if, if one of the parents moves out. We see a lot of this, so we look at this from a completely new perspective. What is interested in German, or in the German language, the word abandonment, abandonment, the word for abandonment is sich Mutterseelen allein gelassen fühlen, which means to be left without your mother's soul. How true is that? Dr. Hammer's work also explains why kidney problems are so often, or we see kidney problems so often, in pets. Our pets suffer terribly when they are neglected or when they are abandoned. And we also see it in their eyes. So if the abandonment or existent conflicts lasts over a long period of time and is very intense, then the cell proliferation in the tubules forms a kidney tumor. While whether the right or left kidney is involved is random. Also what we have to realize is that every kidney has three sets of tubules. So the tumor grows or develops in one of the kidney and in one of the tubules. But in any case, there is no reason to panic. A tumor is never malignant. It always serves a biological purpose. We have to uh, learn to understand this response on the organ level in the biological context and the programs that we have inherited. So let's see what happens during the healing phase. Well, as soon as the conflict is resolved, the, the proliferation in the tubules instantly stops and now tubercular bacteria and fungi start to remove the tumor. Okay? According to the fourth biologic law, fungi and bacteria are the oldest microbes that populated the oldest tissue and they start to remove the now superfluous cells as soon as the conflict is resolved. 
When tubercular bacteria are involved, then we see during the healing phase kidney tuberculosis. While in our part of the world, people are not supposed to have tuberculosis. So the condition was renamed. It is now called nephrotic syndrome. In the third world, however, it is still called tuberculosis or maybe AIDS. When fungi involved, like candida fungi, then we see during the healing phase so-called renal candidiasis, basically a fungal kidney infection. But based on the fourth biological laws, it, law, it is not the fungi, it is not the DB bacteria that cause the infection. On the contrary, the DP bacteria and the fungi, they help to heal the cancer. So it is only the symptoms like inflammation, fever, a cloudy urine, or night sweats that are interpreted as an infection. There's also another important thing we have to keep in mind uh, in the healing of the kidney which is protein loss. Because tubercular uh, secretion is rich in protein, which is now excreted through the urine, causing protein deficiency. Pro severe protein deficiency can cause serious complications. In fact, it can cause death. So eating food rich in proteins is essential during the healing phase. If a person has a hard time eating, then uh, protein drinks are a great option, but also supplementation with amino acids, who, uh, which are building blocks of proteins, are also of great help. Another thing we should keep in mind that we should not continue, or we should continue, uh, should consume protein before 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Because after 3 p.m., the body has a difficult time uh, with breaking down proteins. Proteins should also not be mixed with carbohydrates because mixed with carbohydrates, the protein metabolism slows down. So we understand now that the healing phase is definitely the wrong time for raw food diets, for juice diets, or for fasting, which is often recommended if somebody has cancer. And this, my friends, applies to all um, uh, 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 tumors that are decomposed during the healing phase, which are tumors and cancers that are controlled from the old brain. So not only to kidney cancer, but also to liver cancer, pancreas cancer, prostate cancer, colon cancer, breast cancer, and so forth. Okay? So we really should watch our diet. The trick is... As soon as a person has night sweats, we know tubercular bacteria involve, are involved, and this is when we need the proteins. We often see cancer patients of people that have cancer wither away, although they are not on chemo, <coughs> excuse me, because they don't get enough proteins. Okay, so proteins, proteins, proteins. Well, if a person doesn't have the microbes, doesn't carry the microbes, again, often because of an overuse of antibiotics, then the kidney tumor stays in place and encapsulates. What well, this would mean in theory that the water retention stays forever. But this is not the case because detoxifying the organism, which is one of the main functions of the kidney, is way too important. So as soon as the conflict is resolved, okay, the body uses the other kidney or the other tubules to release the water. And this is when we, or when people, resolve abandonment or the existence conflict. At the time, at the moment of the resolution, people start peeing, and it could be quite a lot. 
So ca you can start observing this from now on. That all of a sudden you have times a day where just a lot of being, you gained weight before. Now you know that this is connected with feeling abandoned, having ex existence conflict. There is a bill in the mailbox, you say, oh my God, I'm not going to handle this one. We feel ignored, not understood. And all of a sudden, we, as I said, we gain a, a little bit of weight. And when it's resolved, we, it's going to be released. Yeah, this is a diagram, a German New Medicine diagram, that shows the organs that are controlled from the brain stem. I'll just give you a little bit of an idea here. We see right in the center of the brain stem, right in the heart of the brain stem, of the oldest part of the brain, is the control center of the prostate and of the uterus, which are the organs that secure procreation. We also see here the uh, control centers of the organs of the alimentary canal from the mouth to the rectum, beautifully arranged in a ring form order, starting on the right with the pharynx, so the mouth area, esophagus, stomach, liver, pancreas, small intestine, large intestine, rectum. So beautifully arranged in a ring shape. And here on top here, we have the control center of the kidney collecting tubules. The right kidney collecting tubules on the right side, the left on the left. Because there is no crossover correlation from the brain to the organ. So if a person has a kidney cancer on the, in the left kidney, it shows on the brain scan on the, uh, on the right, on the right side. If the kidney tumor is on the left, it shows on the left. And here, is an example. Okay. This brain can show, so we see this beautifully, we see the, the white glia pockets. This is phase B of the healing of a kidney cancer. On a brain scan, this shows as white glia pockets. Uh, conventional medicine would diagnose this as a brain tumor. Okay. I explained the nature of brain tumors already in a previous lecture. It is also now, uh, as you probably know, on the website, uh, the recording of that. So you can uh, go there and watch it. But here we see beautifully, we see uh, on a scan what is happening. So good news, the kidney tumor is in the last part of healing. The abandonment and existence conflict has been resolved. The person has you know, no longer the difficult phase, which is the swelling and, and, and so forth. Okay, another part. In German New Medicine, we call the conflict that is linked to the kidney tumors, tubules also a refugee conflict. People of an entire region can suffer such a refugee conflict. For example, if the, in regions where there is war or the, if there is a natural disaster, these are the real refugees. Just think like a fish out of water. These are people that have to be on the move away from home. So when we hear reports that there are tu tuberculosis outbreaks in refugee camps, now we understand because it is in the camps where people find a shelter, which is basically the resolution of the conflict. This also explains why tuberculosis, not nephrotic syndrome, why tuberculosis is so uh, uh, um, uh, dominant in the third world. Existence conflicts, a fish out of water, on the move, abandonment, refugees. Those are the small refugees, literally. Children can suffer a refugee conflict after their parents separated and they have to shuttle back and forth between mom's place and dad's place. Children suffer refugee conflicts when they have to change school or when they have to move and have to leave their friends behind. We can also suffer a refugee conflict in our own home. 
And I want to share with you a case, an example of German new medicine in practice. This is about a man who suffered a refugee conflict every time relatives were visiting because he had to move out of his office and his office basically turned into the guest room. So when the friends or the relatives were visiting, he had water retention and after they have left, he had night sweats. So he couldn't figure out what the pattern was, what was going on. But with learning German new medicine, he immediately was able to make the connections. So what was the resolution? The resolution was in this, kind, in this case finding an arrangement, finding a compromise that suited everybody who was involved. And this stopped the symptoms. With German new medicine, as we see just with this small example, we are really in control because we know now why we have a symptom, why we have the symptom now, to what type of conflict the symptoms is connected. If the symptom is a conflict active symptoms or if it is already a healing symptoms. Okay? And we know the biological significance of it. And we know that we don't have to panic and we don't have to be scared. I'd like just to uh, show you or share with you uh, here, uh, basically as a slide, the scientific chart of German new medicine. Okay? You can uh, go on our website, learninggnm.com, and there is a lot of uh, explanation. Also, you can order it from there. So basically, the scientific chart, this is the wall chart, quite large. Uh, shows all organs according to the three embryonic germ layers. Okay? The endoderm yellow, the mesoderm orange, and the ectoderm here in red. It also shows uh, the organs, it shows the symptoms that occur in the conflict active phase, it shows the symptoms that occur in the healing phase, it also indicates the biological significance of it and what uh, things we have to watch out and so forth. Uh, the scientific chart is also in book form. There's also diagrams with it. I just thought I'd let you know because this is what people actually use when they learn the work. Because we have a, you know, hemorrhoids or we have a skin rash or we have a sore back or we have a sore ear. We look it up on the chart and say, aha, uh -huh, this is linked. Oh, this is why it is. And this has happened. And we are in control of making changes and um, act like a GNM person. <laughs>